T-Mac, Sean. You guys came back from Japan, not for the Olympics this time, but you went over representing Toyota. And I feel like not many people here actually really know what went down over there. So could you give us a rundown of how it all went? Because you were there for quite a while. Yeah, I mean, it was a big task. We're basically out of, sort of out of nowhere, we got asked if we wanted to travel to Japan, row for a company team and help them win their first national title in the men's eight. And they wanted the best of the best. <laughs> no, they wanted, they wanted a good they rower. For myself and yeah, they wanted a good rower and a retired rower to come <laughs> over and help them do that. And so, um, yeah, it was just this crazy opportunity that popped up. And, you know, we were sort of stupid to say no to it, basically. How long were you over there? Two months total. They wanted us to stay over for longer, but um, two months was about was about it for us. It was a manageable time overseas. And obviously yeah. Tom was coming back to the sport. I had to come back for the um, trial of a single, so if I'd spent any more time in Japan, it would have sort of cannibalized my chances to try and make this single seat. Right, right, of course. Yeah. But it's just you two Kiwis over there, so you're completely immersed in the culture. Yeah, completely immersed. So they pretty much got us over there to help them win the uh, All Japan National Eights title. So they were about oh, 15 seconds off the pace, consistently getting beaten by NTT, which was their sort of arch rivals. Um, but yeah, we were completely immersed in the culture. Um, they spoke very, very little English. Um, sort of zero pretty English. Pretty much zero really? English, to be honest. Um, so we spent a lot of time on Google Translate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we communicated through the language of rowing, which was quite interesting to figure out. Um, but yeah, we had heaps of fun. The language of rowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the heaps of heaps of words were the same. So yeah, we were when we were sort of heading over, we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. Um, but in classic sort of Japanese style, they were extremely well prepared for us being there. Um, and then the part that we were nervous about was, you know, that language barrier, whether we'd be able to get across these concepts that we needed to. Um, and we had to really simplify the language, but for the most part, like some of the words, a lot of the words sort of were the same. So for catch, it was catchy, <laughs> and for swing, it was swingu, and like in and eight, that's all you need, yeah. catch and swing. So um, that kept it quite Rhythm. simple. Rezimu. Rezimu. Yeah. yeah. It sounds yeah. like you just named three Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, <man>. pretty oh. <laughs> much. <laughs> yeah, a little bit like that. It was a little bit like we were in a Pokemon game while yeah, we were over there. Yeah, it felt like that, yeah. <laughs> Communicating through the console and yeah, yeah. collecting badges as we went along. Yeah. And <laughs> so when you were in a Pokemon game, you were trying to level up, yeah. leveling up the boys. Hiroshi was, um, yeah, he's so, so, like, so, oh, yeah. so oh, true. So the clubs are quite different over there. Is, did, did you feel much cold shock different between the New Zealand clubs and how Nationals works in New Zealand and how it works over in Japan? Yeah, it's totally different. The structure of rowing they have over here, like New Zealand, it's all it's all rowing clubs, obviously. Um, in Japan, it's all the best teams are all big corporations, big businesses, um, and we didn't really understand that at first, but yeah. it, it makes sort of perfect sense when you understand like how the Japanese are is um, they have all these big corporate teams um, that have, they have teams in multiple different sports and the reason they have that is that they want to attract really good they want to have really good sporting programs so they attract really good talent out of um, universities and then once those um, athletes and employees work for these companies they generally stay there for their entire lives and so that's how um, mm. That's how I think the corporate rowing has become so big in, in Japan, and that's where all their national athletes come from, is, is from their company teams, basically. Your van played a special role in your tour, did it? What's, what's your van? Why are we sitting in front of your van here for this interview? Well, I mean, we were rowing for Toyota, and I told the boys pretty much immediately that I was a little bit of a Toyota fanboy, and I was showing them my old photos of the old high ace van. Um, and so they loved it. They loved the fact that I had an old Toyota. Um, they don't really see many of the old cars this age on the road in Japan. It's all modern cars. So they just absolutely loved it out of a Toyota van. And then one of the lads, um, Ken, was... Ken, yeah, 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 one of the boys. <laughs> he, um, he got me a gift, which is a, a little, like, one one hundredth size version of this van in the same colour. And so, yeah, they gave me, they gave us heaps of gifts, but that was one of my favorite ones as, a, as an actual replica of this van, which is sitting up on the dashboard in the van at the moment. Yeah, the, the team were, they were obviously Toyota fanboys as well, but we're yeah. actually, we were rowing for Toyota Boshiku, which is the original Toyota company. Mm. And Toyota Motors split off um, 
Toyota Boshiku. And so Toyota Boshiku do all the textiles, all the seats, all the springs. Um, For all the cars, like aeroplanes. Yeah, public yeah, transport. Public, public yeah. transport, aeroplanes, buses. Mm. They're a big textile company, Toyota yeah. Boshiku. Yeah. And they were like, you know what we're going to do? Rolling. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So it is quite unusual in the sense that, like, all these sports teams um, come from company teams. But mm. talking to Hiroshi, the way they did that was uh, after the war in Japan, like, morale in the country and mental health was sort of at a low, sort of understandably. And so the um, these big corporations that Japan has, they incentivized exercise. And so they started, like, volleyball teams, baseball teams, soccer teams, running teams, and, and rowing teams as well. So you, you work for your company, and then it's almost a privilege to be part of these teams mm. and they're really really well funded through these sort of massive corporations so just to get a, a gauge on the scale the company we race against NTT that company in itself would be bigger than New Zealand's top 20 <laughs> listed companies probably so if you think of like your Sparks, your Ones, um, Main Freights you combine the, all of those that's the size of NTT so like these companies are ginormous Huge, kind of yeah. thing like I don't think we can properly understand the scale of the size mm. and so they have these really well funded sports teams and so um, that's kind of how the company sports team culture started and then sort of the I guess they saw productivity from having good mental health from doing exercise yeah. um, in these teams and it just grew from there and so the, these company teams are massive now and they all act as feeders into the national team so like their pathway is you could you work for your company and then you compete for the team and then then you bridge yourself into the national program. Mm. That's cool. Eh? That's yeah. completely different to New Zealand. Oh, oh, it's completely it's different, so yeah. weird to think that it's like the company just offers that much to the country. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh no, it's yeah. Everywhere. And they do, yeah, because they're just they're massive, right, as well. Mm. And like it's a privilege and an honour to like represent Toyota in your company team. And also because you're the like employee work culture there is like Sean mentioned before is you join Toyota in the factory and you mm. stay there 30 years and you work your way up the chain and the only way you can progress is when someone at the top retires kind of thing and that's mm. not for another 40 years so it's not uncommon to be part of one business for 40 years. In New Zealand that would, it's very unlikely yeah. or it's not as common so like you're not worried about taking five years to row for your company team or whatever because your professional development isn't sacrificed because yeah you're going to be at the company for 30 years anyway. Yeah, yeah. it's all hierarchy based over there. Mm -hmm. So there's no, I don't think there's many occasions where people sort of skip the line. Um, you know, yeah, the, no. They really respect the wisdom of people that have done it for longer, um, been in the company for longer and they hire within and then you climb up through the ranks. And it's very similar on a smaller scale what we saw in the rowing team where we had this guy, Ibu, who Tom and I were very oh, fond yeah, of. Ibu, um, yeah, he was. He was first year in the team. But he was basically the guy who was running all the errands, all the errands. He was sort of bottom of the ladder, um, and we absolutely, we 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 loved this guy. We thought he was awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we we're also telling him like, no, you don't need to fill up our cup with water and do our washing. Like we can do that. But it was like such an honour for him to be there doing that and knowing that he was paying his dues so he could like climb that ladder. And I just, I yeah. had so much respect for them, mm. understanding that and the way they operated. You can see why they're just a manufacturing juggernaut, pretty much. Yeah. Mm. So to touch on what Sean said, Ibu was the lower ranked guy on the team. Yeah. He would do our laundry every day. Every day. On <laughs> tour. And we'd be out for dinner and if we had an empty glass of water or whatever, mm. he wasn't doing his job properly. So like it got to a yeah. point where we'd take a drink of water and the minute an empty glass He's touched the thing, up. he lines it up and, and, <laughs> and like Pause fills it, it up. And yeah. so we'd sometimes like play with him a bit and be like, whoa. <laughs> and he'd sort of get in there and fill it up. Because like if he didn't, then he wasn't doing his job properly. Yeah. And But he didn't mind it. And everyone else just leaned into it because they'd all done that before. Yeah. And that's just part of the hierarchy. And you just respect that. Mm. That's yeah. mad commitment. I wish I had an Ebo at home. Eh? Oh, yeah, same. <laughs> I want an Ebo. Everyone wants an Ebo, yeah. Yeah. I think that people like, I think that, um, yeah, well, I was imagining myself as like a young athlete if I were to have that experience and to understand the pride they have at being that person, like the bottom rung of the ladder. Um, there's like so much to learn from that as mm. well, like how important that that person is and that it's not like, they're not like inferior, they're doing their, they're doing their part for the team. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, there was some pretty cool stuff that you could learn about Japanese culture that you could really translate to New Zealand. Um, even when you're like, you're driving around or you're walking around the streets and you see people directing traffic out of a um, out of a gas station and they're wearing big suits and they've got these little lollipops that they're directing traffic, they're taking it really seriously. And I remember when we first arrived, we sort of, I don't know if it was just like the New Zealand lens, we sort of saw these people taking it really seriously, these sort of mundane jobs and we're like, huh, pretty serious and sort of joked at it and then re realised how important that was for their whole culture is that you take pride in whatever you're doing um, no matter what, no matter what it is, like you take yeah. absolute pride in it. I love that, eh? I love mm. that. All right, so this isn't just a one-off unique thing. Is this open for other New Zealanders to try and do? This whole experience of going over? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. So I guess Sean and I were kind of like guinea pigs in that sense to um, sort of see what it was like and whether it was palatable for other athletes to go over, sort of to be contract athletes to these um, company teams. Um, and so we went over there and had some success and what we found is that they definitely want more um, Kiwi, like Kiwi rollers over there because um, New Zealand has such a like, um, high standard of, and high calibre of rowing so they are definitely keen to have other athletes. Yeah and there was, um, I suppose when Tom and I went over there was this huge pressure like we, we basically had to perform and um, we had this big task to complete which was take a crew from 15 seconds behind to winning for the first time and that was a huge effort to do that just with everything we were doing was focused about finding the speed in this um, boat and the fact that we pulled that off um, it gave a lot of um, I, suppose, I suppose credibility to mm. what we were talking about they have more belief um, and so it became easier or it, it was um, a natural progression for them to sort of start that conversation about the next year's trip because of the success that we had um, and so yeah the door is open um, and we are, we are working through that process now. It's something completely new, but um, we know that this sort of relationship with Japanese sport works really well with the rugby teams. Mm. Um, and that's what we're sort of modeling it off. Um, but yeah, we're sort of making it up as we go, but there will be hopefully more opportunities mm. in future for more New Zealanders to come over and represent Toyota, potentially represent some other company teams because I was sitting in that NTT boat after the first time they've lost in seven years. I would be wondering how the hell do we get our hands on uh, a Tom McIntosh or someone or other <laughs> in their boat. So hopefully we can see a continued relationship between yeah, New Zealand athletes and um, Japanese corporate rowing teams, which would be really cool. Nice, nice. All right, so it's just a New Zealand... Uh... What, what sort of New Zealanders are you wanting to go over there? Are they, are they are retired elites, like current elites or on the pathway? And like, are they, what sort of ones are you wanting and like how would they go about, do they reach out to you to try and get in contact? Yeah, um, the opportunity at the moment is through Toyota and obviously Toyota have their own expectations of the type of athletes that we bring over. And so like a big part of that is that we need to have athletes that have like you have to be exceptionally patient and um, and humble and work really hard when you're over there. So we're, that's a big part of that. Mm. You have to have the right sort of values as well because you know the Japanese are very different to New Zealanders. There's a performance um, benchmark which is relatively tough. Like we're really looking for athletes who are in the performance hub or uh, summer squad or, or sort of knocking on that door. Mm. Um, and in future there might be a bit more flexibility, but. Um, for the year coming, it's we're really looking for athletes that are right on that door of, of summer squad or performance hub. Mm. Um, and the way that you sort of put your name forward is just we've set up a, a website, so um, it's on it's on skrowing.co.nz forward slash Japan, um, and you can actually find out a bunch of information about the opportunity happening next year um, and all of the sort of criteria around that um, selection. So. Heaps of information on there if anyone is um, interested in sort of putting the name forward. And now, you can put your name forward if you are, even if you are still uh, waiting on Rowan New Zealand selection. So I know that um, Rowan New Zealand final selection will be sort of in February. Um, I encourage you, even if you're not sure whether you're, what your future is going to be um, over the next year, put your name forward. Obviously, if you make the, a New Zealand team or if you make an under 23s team, that takes precedent. Um, that's priority there. Um, but put your name forward anyway so that we can at least have mm -hmm. you on the list. 
Yeah, because we also see it as a fantastic opportunity for athletes that might not make the under 23 or elite rowing teams. Yep. And then if you're looking at sort of your options for the following year, you, if you want to stay within the sport, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so option, your options are you stay here in New Zealand and sort of train through the winter. And I think there's a trial requirement in August for the 2024-25 summer squad, post Olympic year. Um, and then there's another option of having a three month paid trip in Japan with yeah. um, some of New Zealand's best roles, uh, Sean and another one's also due to join him. Yeah. So you'll, you'll learn from Sean as well, being over there. Um, and it is just an incredible experience. Like I don't think, uh, well, actually no, I don't think I know, there's no other rowing opportunity quite like this. Yeah. Um, Sean and I went in sort of completely blind and had an amazing time. Yeah. And I don't like, that's what rowing can, can give you, you know, these sort of opportunities to spend three months in Japan complete cultural immersion, mm. try new food, God, peanuts. meet new people. Um, it's truly amazing and it does broaden your eyes and just it benefits your mind as well. It's Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, and the, the actual standard of rowing, training, the facilities we have are exceptional. Like, yeah, brand new impackers, yeah. yeah, top of the line, um, sort of a majority of your expenses are covered while yep. you're over there. So that was important for us as well. We wanted to make sure that when you're over there, it's not going to cost you anything. In fact, you'll probably sort of come off financially better off as well. So that's a, a great incentive as well. And I also see the opportunity for athletes who are sort of in the swan song of their career. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of an example of that is that um, I had retired from rowing and then this opportunity came up. And so I see that as potential. Um, but there might be opportunities for those type of athletes, particularly post Olympic year, where mm. athletes are sort of deciding whether they want to continue with the sport. They might be looking to having a year off and looking for something different. Um, I'm looking at you, Matt, see what you're doing after, yeah, after yeah. the Olympics. Um, but I like the idea that there's an opportunity there for, because it's one of the hardest things, like especially if you retire from sport or you're in that post Olympic year, like working out what you're doing and just having like a new goal, something fresh and different to focus towards. Um, I think it helps, yeah, those developing athletes get more perspective and keep rowing fresh. I think it helps athletes who are deciding whether they want to continue with the sport after the Olympics. Um, and I think it helps athletes who are sort of winding up their career. Um, so I hope that it can become that thing where there's more opportunities than just, we're really looking at four seats um, next year, just four athletes going over. But I really, Tom and I really do have this vision of um, having more athletes than that and being able to, you know, be able to bring more athletes into more corporate teams to have this experience. Nice. Is this going to be this generation's for New Zealand's problem of the old US rowing <laughs> problem of not having rowers? We don't now see we're going to be trying to peel them off from yeah. Japan. <laughs> we don't see it as a problem, we see it as a compliment. Yeah. yeah. And Complimentary I, to the Row New Zealand program. And we've been like really transparent with Row New Zealand that we, that, of what we wanted to do. And it's actually, it fits so well. Like it's a perfect little jigsaw the way it fits into their calendar as well, Row New Zealand's calendar. Because um, the season is basically from April um, to sort of August. Um, yeah. But really, we're. Well, this, um, the Japan season is pretty much April through to, it might be more October, but we're pitching to them that April to August, that's the golden window where athletes are, they'll just otherwise be slogging it out over winter if they've missed selection, waiting for summer squad trials. And so it fits right in that gap where athletes, the only other thing they'll be doing is probably working and training. I mean, if you had to choose, um, would you prefer just to slog it out here in New Zealand winter or go to Japan? and earn money rowing, get this experience, come back in time for trials, make the New Zealand team, and then um, even after that, after that trial, you'll still have a couple of months off before summer squad starts. So it fits really well in the calendar. Mm. So I don't think that there's gonna be um, really any issue. And Row New Zealand is, um, in my time in Row New Zealand, there's just been some major um, changes and uh, the ability to accept programs like this and to be open-minded about it which is absolutely fantastic so we can do these things with um, the support of Rowan New Zealand which is awesome yeah sell me on it I'm keen <laughs> sign this, hey man, this, line. Is, this yeah. is half the reason we brought you here yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that we can man, we're sign you up for 20 the camera just turns around onto me yeah. <laughs> stacking me quick what's your 2k toy to bush hockey's US athlete no one ever escapes this question I don't, it doesn't matter who I interview that old young anyone Deceased, doesn't matter. <laughs> What's your 2K? 
My part of my 5k, you mean? <laughs> nah, my 2k is 550. 550. On a Concept 2, yeah. Impressive. Yeah. Sean? Mine is 545 on a Concept 2. Ooh, impressive. That might That's the best 2k we've had on this community chat so far. That's yeah. impressive. All right, thanks so much, guys, for all this interview and everything. And T-Mac, all the best going forward next year for the single. Thank you. And Sean, all the best of your SK Digital and everything you've done there. That's honestly great. And so much thanks both of you guys for helping. Trying to set this up for New Zealand um, athletes to have this options to go over to Tokyo. I think it's great. Mm, yeah. Awesome. Thanks for having us, mate. Cheers. Catch up.